Hello and welcome to whiskey.com where fine spirits meet. Today I am in Switzerland and I'm here in the canton of Appenzell. Yeah, that's like little countries within Switzerland. And the yeah, Appenzell has a really, really big hill. You can see it back there. It's really windy, it's uh, autumn here. And the ascent is uh, 2000. 501 meter and what 90 centimeters high so yeah it's a bit more accurate here in switzerland appenzell is really really famous for their swiss cheese yeah the appenzeller goes around internationally and is a very renowned cheese but appenzell also produces other really really good stuff these guys here really do quality stuff and today we're gonna look at the centis single malt and the center single malt is produced by the Locha Brewery. And we're gonna go down to the Locha Brewery and let's have a look at how this whiskey is being produced. So the story of the Centis single malt whiskey is a family story. And the family story begins with Johann Christoph Locher, a Swiss dude born in 1837. And he went to Germany, to Berlin, to learn the trade of making beer. And he learned there and he became a master of the trade. And then he actually got his own brewery, the Brauerei Obereck. Later, the uh, Appenzell Brewery came together and they also had different branches of the family going with different breweries that still exist today. And back in the days it was much, much different to brew beer. You can see here they are with a, a sled and they go out to the, to the lakes and they actually take huge saws and cut out huge chunks of ice, put them in the cellar and have the ice stored there over the year. And when they deliver beer, they always put ice to the beer because that's the only way how to make it more durable. And back in the days, the beer was all 4%. So it went bad really, really fast. Um, they all had horses and casks and later here you can see they had the industrialization over the second, third and fourth generation. There was much, much more industrialization coming on with uh, trucks and more equipment and just yeah, better stuff. But um, the legislation in, yeah, in Switzerland was very, very different to the free market that we knew, uh, that we know today. Back in 1992, uh, the Appenzell Brewery was only allowed to uh, sh ship their stuff 12 kilometers away. That's less than 10 miles. So they only had a 10 mile radius of delivering their stuff to. And in 1993, the liberalization of the markets in, yeah, yes, that's 1993. The liberalization of the markets happened, so the uh, Locha AG was allowed to sell their beer worldwide. So this is the delivery area in 1992, which is just the area around these mountains. And now today they're allowed to sell their beer all around the world. And this year, this guy is uh, called Karl Locha. He was born in 1960. And he started to make the um, Centis single malt whiskey. And there was also a hurdle of legislation there because since, uh, until 1999, you were not allowed to make any spirit out of grain or potatoes in, uh, in Switzerland. That's because the, the two wars, the two big wars, um, were all around Switzerland, so they they really had damaged the country as well. And so that, that was a protective legislation that you were not allowed to um, make any spirit with basic nutrition. All the other countries had that as well, but they ended the legislation after the war. And in Switzerland, this legislation continued on until 1999. That was the day the uh, the year that the distilleries were allowed to make whiskey. And Karl Locher, an innovative guy, 
he started to produce uh, the whiskey straight away. And that means after three years, they came out with their first single malt whiskey. So we know the scent is single malt since 2002. And now let's have a look how this scent is single malt is being produced. So the scent is single malt is being produced by the Locha Brewery. So yeah, it's actually a brewery. And with beer brewing, there is a lot more focus on the, the mashing part. Whereas in Scotland, we have mashing done in one mash tun, we now have a four stage process. But first of all, we go to the raw material. The malt is being milled down by a Swiss Bühler mill, which is a, a six pin roller mill, which has three stages. And it's a high tech precision tool where they can yeah, mill anything into any kind of coarse grist or flour they want. They usually do a coarse grist, but they have to vary it for the different kind of material they do and for the different brands of barley and for, yeah, sometimes different qualities of uh, barley. Yeah, everything ends up here in the first stage in the actual mash tun, where the actual mashing happens. So we, we get the filled in um, grist with water and it's about 55 degrees Celsius and you heat it up to sometimes 75. Also depends on the brand of barley or the quality of the barley. So it's, it varies a little. And that's all down to the, yeah, the knowledge of the, the masters doing the craft around here. After that stage, we come to the lauder ton. So yeah, they do have a difference between a mash ton and a lauder ton. The laudering is uh, when you separate the solid parts from the liquid parts. So you have a false floor and the, the grist is actually done in a very specific way. Before they uh, grind down the, the malt, they actually condition it. So they sprinkle a little, a little water on it or they spray a little water on it. And that gives you a layer of grist that is very specific and that actually is a, a lautering layer. So what they do is they bring out the, the liquid part through the grist and that gives you yeah, extra quality. How that works, don't ask me. That's a bit of a secret around here. Uh, the third part is the, actually the last ton here in the picture, and that is the, the cooking. So they actually do a, a cooking step. In the beer process, you cook in the hops. In the single mold, we don't add any hops. They don't do a normal cooking like you know from your stove when you have water in it, you, you turn it up and at 100 degrees Celsius, it boils but they actually reduce the pressure. And by reducing the pressure, the boiling point is also reduced, so it boils a bit lower than uh, 100 degrees Celsius. And that means it's not as violently boiling. And that process actually purifies the liquid. So some substances you don't want to have in there are actually evaporated out of there. And in the beer brewing process, that is very, very, um, yeah, very important because you don't have a distilling process where you can separate that. But it actually makes it cleaner. It's good for the malt anyways. So if you had not have that, your beer would be very malty, very moldy and very yeah, sticky. I don't know how to describe it very well, but it wouldn't taste as fresh and refreshing as an Appenzeller beer does right now. After that step, where it's been reduced a bit down, so the sugar content in the liquid rises because we lose some water, it comes to the last step. And they actually call it whirlpool, yes. It's actually um, yeah, a vortex. And in the, on the very inside of the vortex, the last bits of the grist are actually collected and separated from the liquid. And that liquid is then at the yeah, perfect temperature, no, not temperature, but the perfect concentration of sugar for the fermentation. After that last step, we go through a, um, a heat exchanger and extract the heat, which is actually used again later in the process. And the uh, temperature of the now mash is reduced to seven to nine degrees Celsius. Yeah, that is really low, but that also comes a little from the beer brewing process. Now let's have a look at the next stage of fermentation. So I can't show you the wash bags, 
but I can tell you about the wash bags. The wash bags are stainless steel tanks and they're actually cooled. So they ferment their mash at about 15 degrees Celsius. They come in with seven to eight degrees Celsius and it rises up to 15 and then they have a water cooling system. So what they want to do is they want to ferment very, very long, 80 to 120 hours. And that gives you a very mild wash, very mild beer. And that's exactly what they want. They want fruity, they want mild, and they want very easy whiskey. And that ends up with seven to eight percent alcohol, and it comes in to their uh, pot stills. They do double distillation, end up with 80% ABV, and they open up all the floors because that's not necessary for the Centis malt. The floors are from different distillates they also do. But uh, at the Centis malt, they're looking to have the, the four shots a bit longer. The four shots, what, what makes the whiskey a bit more alcohol-like, feel-like. And so they, they filter out more of the four shots. So the whiskey doesn't feel spirity. It feels more gentle, more mild, more fruity with more aromas. So it also does create more of the waste spirit that has to be recycled and to do, done again but it also increases the quality of the Centis malt. And in the end, after the double distillation, they end up with about 80% ABV, and that goes up into the casks. After the certain standard maturing, we, we go off to the finishing over there, uh, over in the other uh, cellar. And they have, do have a lot of different casks, small casks, big casks, and they have a lot of yeah, variation of cast. They have sherry, they have wine, they have Madeira, they have port. And the specialty is that they're not all big port pipes. They all have small ports, they have small sherry, they have normal barrique size, they have even the big ones as well. They have cognac casks. So there's a lot of variation going on and I um, probably think there will be much more interesting uh, cask finishes, exclusive barrel uh, bottlings coming out in the future. What is very interesting is uh, they have all have cellars and some of them are old um, air bunkers from back of the Cold War or even further. And yeah, they're all very damp and very cold. So it's perfect climate for maturing whiskey. The Centis Mold doesn't just uh, mature their whiskey in their own warehouse, but they also have corporations with uh, a lot of inns and restaurants on the hill around the Centis. And here behind me we see 26 little bottles and you get these little bottles at the different inns and different restaurants. And we are here at the Egli and the Egli is um, yeah, one of the lighter ones and because this is a Russian white oak. And the others got sherry and wine and different kind of, yeah, casks to mature it and this track is a beautiful way to experience all the different maturations because because they got all the same material from the distillery but um, they all mature differently and all get some different outcomes the casks are also stored at very very different locations here we have a nice swiss yeah, wooden hut and uh, the others have it in a cavern, in a hole in the ground, in the woods or just in their inn. Most of them have it in their inn, but um, you can try it uh, straight from the cast at different locations. But uh, if you want to do the track, the fastest one did it in 23 hours, but you didn't try anything. So it was probably a mountain runner. Um, if you want to do it as a normal person, you should plan for about a week with uh, sleeping on the, in the different inns and stuff. And you can experience 26 different whiskies from the same distillery. Yeah, so if you want to do it, I can really recommend it to come to Up and Sell and do the track. Um, yeah, that was it with the production. Thank you very much for watching and see you next time.